Hello, and um, welcome to the Painted Jewelry Box and Other Miniatures group on Facebook. I'm Cece from CC Restyled, and today um, I wanted to hop on and do a little jewelry box refinish um, tutorial. And I'm using some molds from Redesign with Prima. I'm using some of the new small transfers. We may not get that far, but I'm gonna at least get them planned out and show you um, the ones I'm using on this, which may or may not be these little fairies and some wildflowers. So um, each of the small transfers comes with three sheets. Okay, so there's different, you know, you see the front, but look at all the, all the fun stuff that comes with those. So a um, little feminine, a little bit, but then I'm, yeah, you know, adding some of maybe some of my own printed transfers that a customer supplied some cards for me, some tarot um, reading cards that she chose for the recipient of this box. So those are special, and um, she wanted those included. So I'm gonna put those on here as well. Um, molds. I mean, the rest I just kind of am gonna go. I'm gonna figure it out as I go because I know kind of in my mind what I want it to look like, but. Um, I have all the elements thus far, and then uh, we just gotta put it together. But first, before we put it together, we had to take it apart. So I take my jewelry boxes apart as much as possible. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for tuning in. Say hello if you're there, and if you wanna say where you're tuning in from, that's always cool. I love reading all that. It's always fun. Um, I'll try to catch questions on the, um, if I can't, I'll try to watch the replay and, and catch any, but. We're gonna get right to work. Work. Hmm. So first and foremost, I've taken out the draws. Remove the hardware, okay? See all the hinges, gone, hardware. I didn't move the carousel because I don't, um, I'm not painting the inside. Taped off all the felt, okay? So tape off the felt, remove the hardware. I just keep them all in these little kind of paint cups or water cups, whatever. Um, usually they all fit in one, but that's how I know where they all are and I keep them together as long as I don't knock them over, which happens a lot. Um, taped off the side, sides of the drawers. So these, these drawer sides are usually pretty similar. And the way, see if you look at the side there, you see how there's um, like the face of the drawer kind of ends right there. And you would think to yourself, why doesn't she tape it off there? Because I want to tape it off there, but I don't. Because if you look on the inside and you wrap your tape around, because I like to tape, you know, I like to paint the tops too and the edges. Um, it just kind of fits perfectly inside here if you just wrap it around and tape it to here. So once I get it painted, it'll be a nice crisp edge and you won't, you know, that little edge, uh, the natural edge from the face of the drawer, it won't stick out or, you know, it'll be pretty hidden and it'll match and it'll be crisp. So that's what I do on the sides of these drawers. Um, you can do it however you want. You can always tape each little, take a knife and notch out the tape and do that too. You could do that, but. I mean, why not? When I put my tape on, I always take my fingernail and I run it along the edge of my tape. Cause if you don't, you know, it's really easy to get the bleed from your paint. Um, and you just wanna make sure it's on there really well or why well, tape it off, you know? So I run my fingernail along that or you can use a burnishing tool or a popsicle stick or credit card or something rigid if you don't have a fingernail or whatever. Um, Let's see, tape off the inside of the velvet, right up to the edge there. That part's a little tricky, but uh, you can do it. Uh, sometimes I just use a steady hand and I go around and I make a really sharp trim, um, you know. But, you know, I don't like to show people the not proper thorough way, so we taped it off. Um, I gave it a little clean and a little scuff sand. Um, these boxes are not always 100% wood. Some of them, I, I don't know if you can see or not, but they are um, like manufactured wood and then they'll have sometimes a little bit of veneer over the top of real wood. So um, usually you can at least scuff sand them and that's all you really need. They are, um, they just need to be a little scuffed up to take the paint, so that's it. You don't usually need a primer. Um, most jewelry boxes I've ever, I've never come across a jewelry box that bled through. It's possible, I'm not saying there's not any, but I haven't had one, so um, I don't usually prime for bleed or stains or anything like that. And as far as blocking for bonding or adhesion, like I said, 
usually the wood or fake wood will scuff up with, with the sanding block. So there's no need to prime it, prime it with a, you know, prime it with a product that, you know, is for things that are not sandable. So bonding and adhesion primers. Um, I see a lot of people say, oh, it's got a glossy finish, use this or that, but it's just kind of a waste of time and a waste of product when you can just take your sanding paper and just go over it a few times and you don't have to wait for it to dry overnight. Um, if it's wood, you can scuff it up. If it's plastic, laminate, any of those man-made materials, then yes, um, a primer for, for bonding is what you would want. And I always, I always follow the instructions on those, which is usually two coats and wait overnight. Because if you're gonna take the time to do the prime, then you're gonna want to make sure it's maximum efficacy, right? So maximum uh, product, you know, make it work. You want it to work. You don't wanna not use it the right way and it fails. So I've got some molds here. I've cast in resin. Um, I am using, so on the top, I'm gonna to use Stars and Moons mold. I know you can't actually see them. That's what they look like there. Stars and Moons on the top, cause right, the top is the sky, am I, right? Um, cherry blossoms, because I always love me some cherry blossoms. They're the perfect size for these. You, they're small um, and there's lots of little blooms and twigs and you can configure them however you want to fit whatever space you want on the side, the top, whatever, the drawers. And then a little bit of leafy blossoms. So leafy blossoms is, leafy blossoms, there's one little piece of it. These are all redesigned with Prima molds. They're silicone molds. There it is, there it is. Don't judge me on my nasty, messy mold. I'll, pe I'll peel it off later. I don't put them away like this. But, um, uh, so redesigned with Prima molds are silicone molds. They're food safe, BPA free. You can put chocolate in them. You can use them in the oven. Um, uh, they just peel. You don't need cornstarch or anything to dust the molds with. Whatever, if you're using resin or air dry clay, you, most air dry clays that I've used, or modeling material or hot glue, which are the three more common uh, mold making materials, um, it'll just peel out. It just peels out. You don't need to dust it. Um, you know, I like to save steps, so I don't use anything that requires extra steps if I can help it. And I find that the resin with the silicone molds is my favorite because it gets the most amount of detail, picks up all the detail in the molds, it peels off so it cleans easily. Um, there's really not a whole lot of downs, downfalls. I mean, it cures quick, so you have a one-to-one -one ratio of two different parts. You mix them together, pour them, and in a few minutes you have you a mold. It's like magic. So I did that earlier, I went ahead and poured them. However, a couple of them have not been cleaned yet, so um, you'll see if you over pour your molds, by mistake, like we sometimes do, you'll get these little, you know, extras here. <laughs> um, sometimes with your fingernail, they'll just pop right off, but um, I think this one's been sitting out a little while, so I'm just gonna use an X-Acto knife real quick and go around the corners, or I mean the edges where those little extras are, and just, you know, shave them off. It's no big deal, it takes two minutes. It's actually kind of fun if I'm not, it's actually kind of satisfying. So I just shave off those little extras. Um, one more thing is that I like resin because if you use the molds right after they turn white, okay, so when they're ready to be used or peel out of the mold, is they turn white when you're using quick setting resin, not regular epoxy. But they turn white, so if you peel them out, they are still pliable, so you can conform them to, you know, bendy surfaces, curved surfaces, around corners, what have you. Um, but also, you know, once you have them attached, they'll continue to cure up and get hard and then be completely rigid after, you know, a day or so or less. Um, but you can sand them. So if you see here uh, where I'm, I don't know, some of these aren't attached, so I don't know how I'm gonna, um, can, oh, you can see those. <coughs> see, my cherry blossom twigs were a little bit too long, my branches, a little bit too long, so I cut them. Sorry, the base of this is gigantic, I can't get, a whole lot closer. The base is huge. Uh, there we go. Is that better? So some of my branches were a little long, so I just kind of cut them off with scissors, and they're a little sharp now. So I'm gonna take a, some sandpaper and I'm gonna sand those smooth again. That's awesome. I think um, it helps a lot 
with customization and, and different things that you might have, different projects might come out, you know, be ahead of you and you're like, oh, I love this, but it doesn't fit here. Well, you can cut them and customize them. Like, that's cool. Chop them up and sand them down and they'll fit. So that's fun. I love anything that's customizable, right? We want our own, we don't want to run with the pack. We want to make our own. We want to do it our way. My way or the highway, right? All right, a couple more little guys here. Anyone want to get off of there? So when I'm putting my molds on, for this in particular, like usually I have a very clear vision in my head of where every element's gonna lay. Cause I've used it before and I know where it, I know how much room it takes up and I know this and that, but this and you know, in particular, I'm adding in those small transfers. This is the first time I've ever used the small transfers from Redesign with Prima. They just came out last Friday. So a week from today or a week, a week ago today is when they were released. And they're perfect for jewelry boxes and smalls and little signs and trinkets and things like that that you like to make crafts and stuff. So I'm gonna use those on here, but I haven't used them before. So I don't really know the sizing really of everything and how it um, is gonna fit in. So before I fit the rest of my molds on here, I probably just wanna take a look at those and um, make sure that it's gonna work out the way I think before I place my molds. So, um, I think the biggest part is probably the fairy. If I put a fairy on here, I gotta make sure she's gonna fit or at least be able to, you know, be edited to fit. So I gotta pick a fairy and then all these flowers will kind of fit wherever really, wherever I see a little need for something or some color or whatever. So I'm thinking just kind of around the bottom to add some color to my little leafy um, guys here. And then obviously the fairy maybe in this big spot, but I want to make sure she's going to make sense there. So I'm going to open these. I'm going to open the fairy one real quick. Make sure. And then I'll go ahead and put my molds on. Um, let's see. Fairy flowers is what this one's called. So all of the sheets are 6 by 12. So about a foot tall. So you can kind of imagine she's probably about seven, 6 or 7 inches is my guess and i love the colors in this because ah! whoops oh, i'm too old for this so i love the colors in this because i really like the kind of vintage vibe do you guys remember the like the og transfers i think they were probably mostly water slide but they were like on everything wood and little dolls and bears and stuff from like the i'm not even 70s maybe I like the colors in those. I mean, I don't necessarily like bears and stuff, but that's why I like these and that's what this reminds me of. I really like the vintage colors. Um, I'm gonna obviously add some brighter colors in there because I think that if I did too pastel of a color scheme on the base, um, I don't want them to blend in and I want them to pop. So we're gonna do a, a little bit bolder maybe of a color scheme in the background. That way these little fairies and, and stuff, they kind of pop and look at those See those little pink flowers? Those look a lot like our cherry blossoms here. I mean, don't they look very similar? Mm-hmm. So I am totally digging. I saw this one on the background. Oh, I just noticed her. I was thinking that was a big yellow flower this whole time. I didn't even notice that was a fairy. Ooh, that might fit right there too. Oh, I gotta think about that. Think about that. Oh, but this gal. Oh, these two, okay. Mm. This girl's a little big. I don't know if we're gonna use her. She's gonna take up a whole side and she doesn't get that kind of real estate. So I'm thinking this little gal flying or this little gal sitting on the tulip or whatever, maybe right here. And then she'll have the little leafies below her and then the cherry blossoms above her. I'm thinking she's probably gonna fit right there. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll cut it out so you can see where I'm going with this. And then of course, like the little, the little butterflies and, and look at that purple and greenish aqua butterfly. Like that color combination is the bomb. And then these little, I can't, I can't. I wanna just do all the things. So I'm gonna cut her out and put her there. I'm not real too sure about this big old tulip right here fitting. Plus tulips and cherry blossoms, like that doesn't make any sense. 
So I'm gonna cut her out and then I'm probably gonna go ahead and make the executive decision to cut out that little tulip, big tulip, but I'm not gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna keep it because I may change my mind. I may find another project or, no, or another spot on this project where it will work and uh, make sense. So, hmm. so I'm gonna put those aside. So far, I'm digging this because they're small and they're manageable and the backing paper's not flying off and they're not all rolling up on me and feeling like I'm, like I'm in a cartoon trying to keep them flat. No, you know what I'm talking about. Chasing each side of the paper rolling up. I'm like Bugs Bunny or something. All right, so I think she'll fit right there. You think? You, you can probably see it better than I can. I'm upside down and sideways. So I'm thinking maybe right here. And then um, leafy guys will go right around here. It's okay if her foot kind of gets lost in the leaf. That's all right. That's a, you know, it could be behind the leaf. This could be in our foreground. Or maybe we hack off that bottom little twig. I think we'll probably do that. Hack off the bottom twig, throw that there, and then we'll have room for flowers. Boom, all the things. So I'm just gonna cut off this little end with my scissors. Make sure that fits right there. And then this guy can kind of hang out wherever he wants. He's a little floating. Little floating guy. Well, maybe we'll ground him. I don't know. Can you see that? I don't know if I'm going to ground him or float him. We'll see. Maybe he'll float. I don't know. But so now we have somewhat of a starting point here, right? So I'm going to put her aside. I lo look at her. Ha I can't with this. Look at her hair. It's so pretty and <sighs> dreamy, dreamy, ethereal. So some of these are attached. The twigs are attached. I'm gonna go ahead and finish attaching my cherry blossom um, blossoms and then my little leafy guys, which I wanted to have this done <clears throat> way before I went on this video. I also wanted to have it partly painted before I started the video, but every time I intend to go do something, <clears throat> something else pops up. And I know, I know everybody's life is like that. It happens. I just feel like it happens a lot more frequently in my life. <laughs> Every time I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna do this. It's like 10 obstacles. It's like, really? This is a test. This is a test, but it's okay. Here we are, chilling out. We made it. So I use Tight Bond Quick and Thick um, or hot Gorilla Glue. So Gorilla Glue sticks, doesn't matter what size of glue sticks, but I really like them. I usually use them for projects that are maybe a little bit larger. I'm more, if I'm in a more time, in a time crunch or feeling impatient, I use the Gorilla Hot Glue. Um, but usually I like to just use Tight Bond Quick and Thick if I can. You have more time to sit in place where you're gonna put your mold instead of just slapping it on there and being like, oh, I hope that's right. Um, also, it's, I mean, if you crunch numbers, it's more economical for the Tight Bond takes a little bit longer to cure, not much, but a little bit longer to set in place. Um, and also if I'm, if I'm molding on a painted surface, I like to use the tight bond if I have to. I usually try to do it straight to the, the surface or the substrate, whatever I'm you know, molding. I like to do it straight to that piece, okay? That's how I feel the most confident in their you know, <laughs> lasting, in their longevity. So I usually just paint it on the back of these molds with a brush because if you squeeze it out of the bottle, it's way too much. And it's kind of hard to spread around, um, you know, unless you have a big mold, but these are not big molds. So I just kind of clamp it in place with my hand. And while I do that, we're gonna figure out where this guy's gonna go. I don't know if I want him floating or if I want him grounded. I say we just ground him. That way we can have room for flowers floating, coming up from the ground. So let's do that. So tight bond, quick and thick, brush it on the back. I mean, I'm not super liberal because you don't want those little... <sighs> I swear, when this video is over, I'm just done for the day, I'm giving up. <laughs> Gonna go into hibernation for the rest of the night. So I, you know, a decent amount, enough to hold it on there, but not so much that it squirts out the bottom, you know, out of the bottom of the mold too much. And if you do get that, you know, um, that glue kind of squeezing out the bottom, that's okay. I usually take 
a little artist brush or I wipe off the brush I'm using. <coughs> Excuse me. Or I wipe off the brush I'm using and then I use that to just clean up those little gloops of, of glue. You just don't want those drippy lumps of glue. That's not very pretty, you know? Not very sightly. So that will just take a second to kind of set in place. We got a couple more little flowers and then we're gonna let that set for just a minute while we um, kind of start painting our drawers here. So we got a little cherry blossom flower here, kind of hanging out by itself. Let's just plop that right there. When I'm placing flowers or twigs or, you know, berries or nature, you know, all the nature things, clusters of anything, I like to, I don't know how to say this, because I see a lot of people, I see a lot of people just kind of slapping things on wherever they want. And that, that's fine, you do whatever you want. I'm not knocking you doing what you want for your own vision, for your own project. I'm just saying, you know, I like to think about it um, a little bit more and um, make it a little more pleasing, you know, aesthetically pleasing. So when I'm dealing with flowers, berries, acorns, twigs, whatever, grass, I kind of cluster my items together. So if you're looking out at a cherry blossom tree, I mean, it's not gonna be, you're not gonna have stuff all over the landscape, right? You're gonna have your clusters of flowers together tightly to the branches for the most part, because you know, they're growing out of the branches, right? So I just try to think about it, how it would be in nature, which would mean I'm not gonna have a random, you know, I'm not gonna have a random flower there and a random flower there. Like that's just not really natural. If you wanna do that, that's totally fine. I'm not gonna judge you. I'm just telling you how I decide where to put my you know, little pieces. I don't know where this came from. Dang it, now I messed myself up. Was that it? Well, that's gonna be it. So let's see, this little big guy here needs some glue. Okay, so we're gonna put him right there. So cluster him tightly to his little branch. Now, if the backs of your molds are not flat, okay, so if they're concave or convex, bubbled or, you know, sunken, one or the other, you probably wanna sand them flat with some sandpaper. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but enough to where, um, you know, I'm afraid this one's a little uh, sunken, like, which means I could have filled it up with resin a little bit more. So that's why it's not sticking very well because the surface is not touching with the glue. It's just a little bit, it's got a little bit of ridges around the edge. So I'm just gonna use a little bit more glue in this case. Since it's got glue all over it, I'm not gonna stain it now. I probably wouldn't have been smart, but I didn't, re I didn't realize it until it was too late. We're just gonna put a little extra glue. Boom. And we'll let it cure. Let it cure, let it cure. Let it cure. And I'm gonna wipe off my little goopy glue splurts. And just, all right, so now I'm gonna just leave it alone. Leave it alone, leave it alone. Then we got one more little guy here. Oh wait, no, just kidding, that guy. Dang it. See, this is why I like to use the hot glue. I'm just kind of impatient and I'm like, come on with it. Let's go, let's get moving. Less talking, more gluing. Okay, so that guy can hit, sit right there. This little guy, and then we'll clean up the edges of the glue that squirted out from under it, because we are impatient. And I think this little, I don't even know, is this a bud or an acorn or something? I don't even know, I think it's a bud. Cherry, blo cherry blossom bud. I don't know, is that even how I had it to begin with? I don't know. Does that look right? Yep, it's, it's gonna work. It's gonna work. So let me just take my little art brush and I'm gonna wipe it off and I'm just cleaning up that little glue that squirted out, because that's no bueno. And it dries. I mean, it's not like you're going to see it if you just kind of like <clears throat> try to get it out with your brush and it spreads around a little bit. That's okay. You're not going to see it once you paint it. It's all good. It's all good. 
All right, so this one, and then I'm gonna let that set for a minute and you know start to cure at least enough to where we can paint it and we don't have to worry about the, glue, the molds moving all over on us while we paint. That's, that's embarrassing, but all right, so there we go, I think. Got them all, got them all. Now, now we can see it. Fancy, right? Not so much, not yet. I cannot stand looking at molds on a piece like this when it's not done. I just, it hurts my eyes. Cause I'm like, no, that's not right. It looks terrible. So we're gonna move it out of our eyesight, let it dry and move on to the drawers because it's just, I don't know, hard to envision what they're gonna look like done. You know? All right, so that's out of the way for now. I'm gonna put the fan on it just cause. All right, so molds on one side done. I'm still gonna do the same-ish molds on the other side. I'm not gonna match it perfectly, but I'm gonna do cherry blossoms and leafy blossoms um, on the side. So it'll be similar. The little transfers I printed of the tarot cards that I showed you, those are gonna go on the top. Um, top. I, I did extras because if I screw one up, then I have more and I don't have to go back and waste a whole other sheet of transfer paper. Um, so I just, if it's small, I just print extras. Better to be safe than sorry, right? Okay, so <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and start on our draws here because, woo, pro, you know, once I, once I start painting on any project, I'm like, okay, we're in the home stretch. We're good. We made it. We made it to the paint. It's like a milestone for me. It's a chance to sit back and just do the relaxing part. Well, to me. So like I said earlier, you wanna take your fingernail or a transfer tool or something and um, make sure you run it along the edge of your tape. You want it to be on there, okay? On there, good. Um, so the colors I'm using, which we're just gonna kinda do, ah, oh, man. These go down the center. These are the doors on the side. And then you saw the box. So I don't want to paint a sky. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm not quite so literal. I want to give the feeling of a sky because they're fairies, they fly, fly, sky, you know, it goes together. But uh, I don't want to paint just a sky and clouds. I also, I don't know, so I, I'm gonna start with this color. So this is gonna be our sky, um, <sighs> A little nod to clouds, right? Sophia from Paint Couture. It's kind of like a vintagey blue, which, as I mentioned earlier, the vintagey colors in the um, fairies, I dig. So we're gonna start with a, kind of a base of that for the most part, and then I want to kind of also add in some greens um, that are. Uh, I'm not like I said. I'm not gonna sit there and paint grass or a landscape. I don't want to do that. It's nothing wrong with that. That's just not, I want it to be more dreamy, more dreamlike. So I think um, I pulled some of the colors out of the fairies or the whole transfer really. So you see these little kind of greens here. I got me a nice little uh, avocado type green, which happens to be called guac and roll. Avocado green, guac and roll, you get it? So this is also a paint couture color. It's one of the colors from my paint uh, collection of paint colors, but it's paint couture, same paint, and it's got good coverage, and it is an acrylic mineral paint, furniture, cabinets, all of the things you would use a chalk style paint for. Finish is just a little smoother, less gritty, less chalky, and um, just, you know, that's just one of the things. So I think on these drawers, we're, in, we're gonna end up using some of these little butterflies and flowers from the little, these little nuggets around the, the fairies. So I want to kind of create a background for, let's just say, you know, oh, I love these butterflies. I love them, they're so cute and they're the perfect size. So we got those, I don't know, we got these. I, not really my favorite. I mean, these remind me of those old transfers I was telling about from the 70s, like the, the OG. You know, they were on like every toy box. Every toy box built by your grandpa had one of these on there or a 
the old high, uh, high chairs, the old wooden high chairs, they had one on the back. Um, and they had no straps. They were basically, basically a death trap, but nobody cared. Um, I don't know, maybe our little, maybe our little uh, straggler that we left behind or a little orphan will find his way onto a drawer. I don't know. So I'm just kind of being mindful of the fact that I'm gonna put certain elements. Oh my gosh, I just found my favorite thing ever. <sighs> Look at this little cluster. Isn't that like the prettiest little cluster right there? It's like the colors are perfect, the size and the, ah, ah. My brain is just, my brain is going crazy right now. I don't even know. <sighs> okay, so back up. I also have these that I'm gonna use to fill in spots. So I got these, the bees. Oh, okay, we're opening it. We're opening it. Botanical paradise, you guys. Botanical paradise. But <laughs> I have not seen a single comment except for, but did we die? No, we used to sit in the back window of the station wagon and look out and nobody said a damn thing. It was just fine. No police, no danger, danger, no child abuse or neglect. We, we were sitting in the back of the station wagon, looking out the window with no seat belts on. I don't even know if they had seat belts back there. Probably not. No big deal. Back of a truck, riding around in the back of the truck before you were not allowed to. It's like, okay. I'm gonna be quiet now before I say something I shouldn't, but um, those were the days. And no, we didn't, well, most of us are still here to tell about it. Look at those, look at the colors. Look at the colors. I mean, I saw these in the package. I've seen them online. I've seen them on Facebook, but in the real life, like, oh, I can't. And the bees, okay, so these are perfect. They'll go in with our fairies. So I think, let's just get our drawers painted and then we'll, it's gonna work. It's gonna work. I don't really think I need to plan too much more because it's gonna happen. So I'm gonna do some greens to kind of give the illusion of a land or grass or um, grounded area. I'm also, so I showed you guac and roll. This is Elvis Parsley. It's like a seafoam green, speaking of vintage and the 70s. Do you remember, you know, both of these colors were, no, this was more 60s, right? So 60s, 70s appliance colors or toilets, you know, sinks, all the, all the things. They were those colors. So the vintage goes, but also it's the colors of grass. And you're probably like, well, those greens don't go together. What is she thinking? I like to use the, um, I like to use a little bit different of a color. You know, you have your color palette. It all goes together. It looks all pretty. Then I like to throw in a different, different kind of contrasting color, something you wouldn't expect, something that's not falling in line with the um, color palette you already have per se. That's what I like to call that blendy blend because you just blend on in something that you wouldn't expect and it's, it's pretty, it works. Just adds highlights and interest, gives it movement. And we're also going to throw in plums and roses. So <clears throat> I told you about my nod to the sky and clouds, my, in, you know, my um, kind of grass reference. And then the purple for me is more of like a midnight sky or dark sky kind of feel. So that's gonna be somewhere at the top. Um, and again, I'm not painting a freaking galaxy or a nighttime sky per se. So when I'm working on this, don't be like, but that doesn't look like a sky. It's not supposed to. I just want to kind of um, hint at those elements, not paint them literally. So I'm going to go and start with my Sophia, actually. Sophia. And while I'm trying to open that without a disaster, um, these doors had those funky glass panels in them. You know what I'm talking about? Funky glass with the funky uh, flowers on them, the faux. Oh, I just, I just splattered paint all over my, all over myself. What's new? What's new? Hmm. Hmm. It's par for the course at this point. I got on my glasses. Dang it. Is anyone else as clumsy, like, on the regular, like, all the time? I feel like I'm just such a klutz. Um... I don't even know what I'm saying now. Oh, doors, on the doors. So I see a lot of people asking in the group, 
Like, what do you guys do with the old glass? Or how do you cover the flowers? Or how do you add something to it or whatever? I don't, I take the glass out. I use it as a template to trace either, um, I'll get plywood, okay, quarter or eighth inch plywood panels. So then I have more real estate for my whatevers, my embellishments or not. Um, you know, and or, I mean, most of the time, let's be honest, I just fill it in with some, um, I replace it with some decorative sheeting, metal sheeting. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You can get this at Hobby Lobby in lots of different patterns for $6.99 a sheet. $6.99. I mean, can you beat that? I could get like three jewelry box doors out of this, or four even. Um, it's rigid enough to be a replacement for the the glass so it can stick in there but on its own it doesn't need a backer or anything like that it's rigid enough for that but it's also i don't want to say flimsy it's also thin enough that you can cut it with scissors i'm really a nut job about my scissors so i don't like to cut it with my scissors i have this whole sheer jobby thingy but it's like cut your finger off kind of powerful so usually i'll just take my least favorite scissors, which I don't skimp on scissors, right? So like a lot of, you know, people have their advice, their things that they like to have nice this or that of. Scissors is one of mine. I don't, I buy nice scissors. I don't buy the cheap scissors um, because I love it. I don't like it. It's one of those experiences that you want to not suck. <laughs> you don't want to, cutting things should not be a chore should just be what it be you know it is what it is so i like to buy nice scissors i buy these like titanium whatevers but look at all the different patterns not even all of them some of them there's that one this one's kind of like uh oh, gothic to me almost the um what do they call them in the churches the roman basilicas not a trefoil a quatrefoil do you know what i'm talking about am i talking crazy am i talking too much architectural history look at this one i like this one because it's a little more um you cannot see through it as much so you're a little more private with your jewelry box items i don't know which one i'm going to use but i use my scissors and my good scissors <laughs> and it cuts just this easy just like that okay you probably don't want to use your fabric scissors though or your paper scissors probably want to dedicate some scissors to that but this is what this one's kind of my go-to I use that one a lot because I love that pattern but anyways less talking so it's rigid but it's also bendy drawers so let's go ahead and start in with our Sophia make sure I got my oh shoot you want to run a fingernail or a transfer tool along your tape edge to make sure it's down but I ran it a little too hard and I tore it so you don't be me you don't want it not too not too light, not too hard in the middle. Goldilocks and three bears. So you wanted it just right. Run it along there. Make sure it's on. Goldilocks that shiz. Okay. Um, let's see. So when I paint, I use a synthetic bristled brush. No exception for jewelry boxes. Samesies as furniture. Um, it helps you to get a nice brush stroke free finish. For the most part, there's other variables that fall into that brush stroke free, you know, getting no brush strokes. But for the most part, as long as you work fairly quickly, don't dilly dallying to keep touching up and going over stuff, let it dry and then touch it up if you need to. But if you just go at a decent pace, uh, most paint, well, not most paints, I shouldn't say that, Paint Couture is a self-leveling paint. So as long as you're not overworking it or it's drying too quickly while you're still painting, it will self-level. And this helps a lot to not get brush strokes. So um, by this, I mean synthetic bristles. So synthetic bristles, plus they're so easy to clean. They're so easy to clean. You just rinse them out as long as they're, it's not hardened. If your paint's not hardened all up in there, you just rinse them. You don't even need soap, but I mean, I guess I let mine harden on accident by mistake sometimes maybe but a scrubby soap will take that right out i literally have brushes i cleaned last recently and they were so i mean they were hard you guys like most people would have been like okay well my bad i'm throwing these away 
Learn my lesson. Not me. I was like, mm, mm cleaning these bad boys. Soaked them in as hot of water as I could possibly get. And then I got my scrubby soap and I went at it with my hard brushes. And at first I was like, this is never gonna work. But I kept going and it worked. So I'm gonna start in the middle with my sky. We're just gonna call it sky, okay? Sophia is our sky, but it's not really sky. So I like to get my sides. I see people paint with drawers and things all the time. Jewelry boxes, dressers, they just paint right over those drawers inside. I can't, I mean, I don't, I'm not gonna judge. I personally can't do that, it drives me batty. If you do that, more power to ya. That's your prerogative, but I like to make sure I have a crisp edge. So, um, so these blue eyes brushes I'm using, I really like them. Um, I mean, I don't have a reason to, I'll always use something better if I come across it, but if I don't, I'm good with, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They come in all different sizes and tip, you know, ovals, flats, straight across, all that kind of jazz, filbert. But I like them because their, their firmness is just perfect enough to where I can, if I have a steady-ish hand, which I don't have steady hands, but steady-ish, just steady enough. You can just go like this and get you a nice straight crisp line right there across that. So, so see how just kind of running it along its side like that gave me that crisp edge. See, look, ma, no drips. So there's that. Now just get the side. If you're, you know, if you tape, you want to either paint in the direction of the tape or against, oh, I'm sorry, whoops. <laughs> in the direction of the tape or away from the tape, okay? You don't wanna to paint towards the tape because then you, you increase, your, increase your chances of getting, you know, paint bleeding underneath that tape. And again, why do it? Why? So we just like to be cautious. So I'm laying down a base of Sophia, our sky-ish, our sky type of look. And I'm starting in the middle because I want to come this way and that way my grassy stuff and my midnighty sky stuff will be up here. So I'm just gonna come down to where I feel like, I'm gonna come down to where I feel like I might want a breaking point. Um, so I'm thinking maybe just part way down this drawer. So wherever I want my colors to break, where I'm adding in a second color to blend it, wherever I want that to stop, I'm gonna go a little bit further so that they can overlap when I add my next color. Really? So you do stuff like that. And then, you know, accidentally grab the box and get fingerprints all over the lining. It's like, if you were lucky enough to not be born a klutz in this world, I would definitely not take that for granted. That's a gift. That is a straight up gift. No, it's not a gift. It's a luxury. You have the luxury of not being clumsy. I'm jelly. Yeah, see? Okay, so see how I did that there? Oh, it's a crisp line. Okay, so I'm just gonna come down. I wanted to come down halfway with the blue, which means, like I said, I'm gonna go a little bit further than how I want, where I want my color to break. A little bit further so I can overlap, if you're planning on blending anyways, which we are. The answer is always yes. I, have, I had a client recently ask me for like, I don't, take t I don't take customs anymore, as of very recently, for a while anyways. Um, I won't. And um, one of my last or most recent ones, she says, I don't want anything crazy. I just want it solid, just one color. I don't, want, I don't need anything fancy. And so I was just like, <sighs> okay, so just one, one, one color. Yeah, just one color. And I was like, okay, I guess, I guess I can do that. Um, but uh, I didn't do one color, but I did such a subtle blend to create a little bit of shadows and a little bit of highlights that nobody really knew. She didn't, I mean, well, sure people knew, but she didn't notice it. You know, non-painters, they don't notice what they don't, they don't notice things, they don't, 
you know, they don't see the details we see. Um, and that, that's a good thing. That's a good thing because that means if you did it right, if you did it so subtly that it made a difference, but no one can pick out that difference. You know, no one, no normal people, no non-painters. If they can't pick out the difference, but they're like, ooh, I like that, then you did a good job. See what I mean? So I just, it was basically like a blue like this, and I took a little bit lighter blue, blended in the centers, and made some highlights, and then around the edges and the corners, did a little bit of a darker blue for some shadowing, and she had no idea, but she loved it. She didn't say, how come you didn't listen to me and paint this one solid color? Because, I mean, technically, to your eye, it looks like one color just in, in the light, you know, with natural shadows and highlights. So I'm just saying, I'm not saying trick your customers. That's not where I'm going at with this. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, you know what is going to make the most impact. You know what is going to behoove a piece or a color or a design. And you should trust that instinct. If that instinct is just stick with one color, then good on ya, do it. That wasn't my instinct at the time. So, all right, so I brought my Sophia up just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside, but I'm gonna hang on to it. I'm not gonna put it away yet. Now I'm gonna get my guac and roll. Mm, am I gonna get guac and roll? Mm, yeah. No, we're gonna get plums and roses. Okay, we're gonna get um, plums and roses, which is my favorite. Not only is this one of my favorite colors ever, but like, I don't know what it is about this color and it could very well be in my head, but all the Pink Couture paints have really good coverage, but this one is like, like stupid good coverage, like magical. I don't know what it is. I think it's the pigmentation. He puts in so much of the color and the pigments that, you know, you just, you get good coverage. It's really not an option. All right, I'm gonna grab one more brush. I'm gonna grab a, little guy here. Let's grab this little guy. All right, so this is just another blue ice. I like these. These are like my favorite for jewelry boxes or anything small or details. They're little. Um, I like that they have these oval, you know, filbert edges and um, which helps for like blending, but they're also firm. Like I showed you on the little line we did earlier, they're firm enough to where you, know, you want to be able to press and it gives some flex, okay? Um, and I'm talking about for, for edging or detailing on a jewelry box or, or whatever, you know? I'm not talking about just painting a whole, the whole piece, but you want some flex, but you want it to be firm as well. So you don't want it to completely flop and be bendy and fluffy. That way it just kind of sits there and you just go across and it just creates a, this perfect little sharp line. It's magic. He's a magic. So we're gonna take our um, plums and roses. Isn't that pretty? Ah, I can't with it. Can't with plums and roses. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start at the top of our um, little set of draws here. So watch, see what I'm talking about here when I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start on the edge here. Then I'm just gonna hold it. Normally go all the way across. Boom, let me look at that. Well, I missed one little spot there, but that was my fault. Look, look at that. I don't even have to paint a second coat on that. I mean, will, because I always do, because it's good measure, but look at that. You you wouldn't know that's one coat. Unless, you know, I mean, obviously you know because you saw it, but I'm just saying coverage is just not, um, there's no parallel to that. It's either, oh, it's just mind blowing. Okay, um, enough, enough of that. So I'm just gonna continue to paint my draw face. With a little bit of plums and roses. Ooh, I dig in these plums and roses with the Sophia. I've never, I don't think I've ever used this combo before. Well, that's not true. Not true. I had a tall curvy dresser I did in a like moon child type theme. And I did use these two colors, okay? But I had a lot of other colors going on with it, pink and navy and stuff like that. So. This won't be the same, but I do dig that combo. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it down. Well, yeah, I'm gonna bring it all the way down. Let's just paint this whole drawer. And then 
we're gonna blendy blend that second drawer um, on the second coat. So do you see what? Do you see how I'm doing this? I have my drawers in order, okay, in the order that they go in the box. Which this drawer it doesn't really matter; they are interchangeable. But most or some drawers you don't ever want to assume they're all the same size. I've done that before on a number of different projects, not just furniture or jewelry boxes. You don't want to assume they're all the same shape and size all the way down. Even if it looks like it, it could be off by an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch and then you can't get your drawers back in or whatever. And then you realize, man, they weren't all the same. Had them out of order. Now my transfer, or my stencil or blah, blah, blah is not gonna line up. So you wanna make sure you have them in order. And then that's how I work and apply my finishes in order. So now I'm gonna come down here and add a little bit of Plums and Roses to the top of this draw. See, I'm overlapping that Sophia just a little bit. I'm bringing my Plums and Roses down to where it just overlaps. Cause I don't wanna see wood in between. I don't wanna see a line of wood in between my two colors. That's not gonna serve any purpose um, except for to make someone cringe. So steady across the top, just like that. I could have taped it off, but I didn't. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, that's coat number one. That's not blended, obviously. But which is going to happen after that dries on the second coat. So we got our midnight sky, our nighttime uh, sky, our, our regular old sky. And now we're going to work our way down to the grass. So I think my best bet is to just go with the guac and roll here. Um, guac and roll, this avocado green. 70s appliance type goodness is uh and I don't say that in a bad way I don't say that in a um bad way at all I I love the color of you know vintage appliances the the pink the I don't love the light blue so much that was more 50s but the pinks the avocados the sea foams I love it so let me let me stir this one up real quick this is the only one I haven't used recently enough to not stir it. Don't judge me by the edge of my can. The rim of my paint can is not a pretty sight. Not a pretty sight at all. Don't judge. You know yours looks like that too. Now, if I'm being um, a good, if I'm being a good influence or t trying to tell you the right way, um, you want to pour out your paint into another vessel or a cup or a whatever have you um, to paint out of that. You don't really wanna paint out of your paint jar or can or whatever. <laughs> That's not good practice. It's good practice to pour it into something else. However, I am more of a do as I say, not as I do type of gal when it comes to that. I don't, I don't clean stencils. I clean brushes way too after the fact. I don't take very good care of my rims on my paint. So. Let me be an example of how not to treat your things. I'm just, I'm a rebel. What am I gonna say? What can I say? So one more brush for this. And this one, let's just, yeah. let's grab another one of these guys. These are, these are, a, they're always a win. They never fail me. Kind of satisfying doing that if I'm honest. Whew. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, you're going there. Ah, see? Ugh, never mind. I'm gonna leave it. Alright, so now I'm gonna start from my bottom up. Okay, so this is my not grass. Grass. Okay. My non-grass. My non-grass, uh, why can't I find the right word? Illusion of grass or hint of grass, hint at grass, I don't know. Grassy, grassy looking area, grassy colored area. My ground. So normally when I blend my paint colors, I will do so on the second coat. Sometimes I'll blend the first coat like if it's still wet and I'm applying the next color and it blends on its own, fine. Um, certain colors I will 
blend on the first coat. It just, you know, if I think they're gonna be less uh, opaque or a little bit transparent, I'll blend the first coat so that if it shows through, you don't get a weird line showing through and it's all nice and pretty and dreamy. Um, but usually I just lay down my first coat of where I want my colors to fall. Don't worry about the blending or anything like that. It's, it's, like, it's like a road map, you know? It's like a little map, a guide. So you're laying down your guide to where your colors will fall so you can get a feel for the land. And then on the second coat, that's when I like to blend. Boom, okay, so there's that. Now my next one, I'm just gonna do this bottom little third of this drawer here because that's where my blend is gonna happen between the guac and roll and the Sophia. Sophia, mamma mia. My paint is Sophia. So I'm overlapping my Sophia a little bit. And I think, uh, you know, on this, on this blend, I'm not going to do such an ombre, you know, hor horizontal line, fade to fade to fade, you know, kind of blend. I'm not going to do that. That's kind of boring to me. Like, it's just like, oh, a gradient, it fades. Okay, cool. I want it to have a purpose. Like I want it to be, this is a background to a scene. It's a background to something on your piece. It's a background to your stencil, your look that you're going for. It's a background to my fairies, their little life. It's a background for something. I mean, granted, yes, you could always just leave it just paint. That's fine too, whatever. But um, in my point of view, it's a background to the story that you're telling on your on your project. So. On this, I don't want just that horizontal fade of green to blue to purple. I want it to be a little more dreamy-like. So, <clears throat> <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I think I'm actually gonna grab a little bit of white paint, just in case. And I promise after we get these blended, I will shut up and I'll hop off here because you're probably like, why does she talk so much? Why doesn't she paint? I thought she painted fast. I thought she was fast. Um, okay, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of white because I'm feeling like there's a possibility that when I'm blending this little uh, dreamy, cloudy goodness, I might wanna add in dabs of white here and there Think about this. Think about like a watercolory type look. So when you, ah, really, you have no idea how much room I have in this building and I still cannot get, I still trip over everything. Everything, everything's always in the way. Oh, I don't get it. How is that possible? Okay, where was I? Sorry, let me melt down. Think watercolor, okay? When you look at a watercolor droplet on a piece, kind of just fades out. There's no harsh edges. There's no horizontal lines. The color doesn't just fade from one color to the next. It, it does what it wants to do. And it has a very organic kind of uh, dispersing type, type of look. It disperses, right? So we're gonna try to kind of get a dispersed blend happening. And so to do that, I think I want a round brush, a big fat round, well, big fat in terms of our piece size here. So a little fat round something, or, oh wait, I don't know, I don't know. Ooh, stencil brush, that might work. Stencil, I prefer a synthetic though. So something like this, um, I wish it was a little smaller. This will work. It's not totally round, but it's ovally. It's like a blush brush. That's what I'm trying to get across. You want something that it looks like you could put on your your rouge, your blush, your makeup with. That's what we want. Because essentially, that's kind of the same same idea, right? Like we want it to look like it's blended into our cheeks and natural. We don't want it to look like it's <laughs> painted on. Oh gosh. So um, I'm gonna go and get out my. 
Oh gosh, Elvis Parsley. Elvis Parsley is another color from my uh, color collection, the Remix color collection um, from Paint Couture. Six colors and a metallic. I'm gonna call it side A, right? Because there's gonna be maybe, I don't know, possibly a side B, right? So my Remix tape, we have side A, side B might be coming very soon to, um, you know, be available. But Elvis Presley, pretty, right? So we're just gonna keep that right there. I'm gonna grab uh, some chop towels and let's start it back up at the top. We're gonna go ahead and just paint on our plums and roses. I'm not gonna do a whole lot of fancy anything on the top. I want it to be dark. This, the nighttime sky doesn't have dreamy, cloudy, you know what I mean? It's just, it's dark and somewhat ominous. Not that this piece is gonna be ominous, but I'm gonna keep our dreaminess to the, below the clouds, okay? Below the, the galaxy. Okay, so a second coat on that one. Notice how long it took to dry. Not long at all, not long at all. Okay, I think we got it, right? No spots missing. Sorry, I was holding that up a little high. Um, and then we're gonna go move on down to our second. Wait, did I? I think I missed something. Aw, you guys are so sweet. Okay, um, oh. <laughs> Tell me about it. I always say that to myself all night, every night. I should be asleep right now. I should be asleep right now, but I'm not. I'm sitting here. Okay, I'll go to sleep in five minutes. I'll go to sleep after I just one more scroll. I'll go to sleep after this, after that. Constantly with the, I'm about to go to sleep and then five hours later, I'm still up. And I'm like, well, it's about to be morning. Might as well just stay up now. I'm gonna grab my Sophia. When I'm blending, I prefer to go from the lighter color to the darker color, um, just because you know, you're gonna be using different brushes and your paint brushes and colors will get contaminated um, somewhat. A little bit contaminated. So when you go, say I were to do the darker color first and then I go to add my Sophia, it's gonna just take over and just really, really get all muddied up on my brush, on my, on my surface here. Dark colors just really kind of invade everything. So I like to do my light color first. It's much easier to clean up a blend that has, um, you know, more of the light, lighter color. Does that make sense? Uh, I don't know how better to say that. The blend just happens easier when you can just blend in little bits of the darker color rather than try to constantly be fixing your color because it's too dark. Like, oh shoot, I used too much. Oh gosh, I got too much. Oh, that's not working. So I put my lighter first, okay, and then in with a little bit of my darker here so I like to get the sides first and the top first basically the furthest away points from the actual blend where it's gonna happen I like to get those painted first so they're true to that color okay so this is gonna stay true to this plums and roses purple same with right here now when I kind of come down here and I start to blend in with the Sophia that's when you can see See how it's just kind of, see how my brush now, it's got the blue on it. When it's the other way around and you got the lighter brush with the darker color on it, you're kind of, it's, yeah. That's a little harder to bounce back from. You can, but it's, it's harder. So I'm gonna just, I got my blend going by doing a couple strokes to start it blending. So it started, you can see that. But I'm just, I'm gonna start kind of dabbing those colors together and at this point, since my purple is wanting to go all kinds of places, I got too much paint on my brush. I'm gonna wipe off the excess by just taking my shop towel, wiping off. You can use a paper towel, microfiber, whatever you want, I, preferably lint-free, so that's what we want. So 
I'm just gonna make sure I got a little bit more dab, dab, dabs, dab in those little spots. And then I wanna kinda grab my, this guy here, and I'll just kinda pounce those colors together. So this is not my typical, like, how I blend. Like, you know, this is not always how I blend colors. It's the look that I'm going for is calling for a more watercolor, dreamy type of blend which means there's no harsh line where the blend starts and ends. It is a organic edge, you know, a ambiguous change between the colors, kind of cloud-like, right? Just a little cloud-like. And I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off my brush. Then I'm gonna grab another real quick brush. And this, this brush, it doesn't really matter what kind of brush. It's just a fluffy little oval. A little bit of Elvis parsley, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And I'm just gonna kind of blend a little bit on the corner. Why is she doing that? What's the point? So what I'm doing is I'm just taking this Elvis and I'm just kind of dabbing in a little bit of interest, okay? I'm, the point is I'm doing it to add interest. When you have different layers, different colors, different tones, different shadows, different highlights, it creates the movement and the depth. Sorry, I keep holding that up way too high. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just gonna move the, the camera up. So just dab it in. You don't have to brush stroke it in, none of that. Dab it, dab, dab, dab. Dab, 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 wipe. Dab, dab, dab. Okay, see, we dabbed. We dabbed it, dabbed it in. Do you see how subtle, like, do you even see the Elvis anymore? But you do see the fact that this corner is lighter, right? It's got a little highlights. Palettes. So if you want, you can go back in and add a little more plums and roses, some PR to get a little like you know interesting corner happening coming down here, like um, and one thing, so when I'm let's say you know I'm painting my jewelry box and I'm doing this crazy blending stuff and um, do I want it to look cohesive all over the box? Like when I put these drawers in, do I want it to look like all one background, one seamless piece, or do I treat them as separate pieces and, you know, try to blend them all together and look as one or, or no? Which is why I think some people blend with their drawers in the piece. I know this, but there's ways around that. But anyways, um, that's something you have to kind of decide what it's going to go with, if it's going to go with your look. I'm not going to make sure that my you know, everything is seamless. But what I am gonna do is when I'm painting my actual box, um, I'm gonna have these lined up next to it. So I'm gonna know where the colors fall from the top of the box um, to the bottom of the box. Does that make sense? So I'm not gonna stick these back in and match up the edges exactly, but I am going to roughly get the colors to fall in the same spot on the drawers as they do the back or the rest of the cabinet. Does that make sense? So it will it will flow. It'll look all to you know coordinate, be one piece, but it's not going to be like a seamless little landscape. Does that make sense? So all right. So I'm gonna dab, dab, dab that right back into the background. Wipe my brush, and I'm gonna shut up and get off here after I show you kind of what my transfers are gonna look like up against these colors. I'm not gonna apply them. I mean, it's not even dry yet. Come on but I can hold them up there. You know, I can, I can envision. God, does she really take this long painting one drawer all the time? Ugh. No, I don't. I mean, sometimes. Once I start and get a couple of drawers in or whatever on any project, it starts moving faster. Sometimes. Okay, I'm gonna stop because I could keep tinkering with that one little drawer all day long. Not gonna do it. Well, okay, that's not true. I'm gonna add a little bit more of my little, sorry. I know, I'm terrible. When people come visit me and they watch me paint in person, like my friends or they're visiting, they're like, oh my God, stop, just stop, stop. I'm like, I can't, I gotta keep going. I want a little more highlight here, I see it. I see it in my head, I can't sleep or rest until it's, it's how I want it. And this is a little bit better. All right, see that little 
Elvis highlight, Elvis Posley, the king has, the king should leave the building. Really, I need to put the brush down and stop. Okay, Elvis, we're done here. Boom, 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 we're done. I don't know, do they call that perfectionist or is that just straight up OCD? I don't know, maybe a little bit of both. I'm, I was blessed with amazing, uh, amazing things like OCD and perfectionism. All right, so here we go, okay? Now I wanna just show you this goodness. Like just for example, okay, check out. Um, well, Kate, I don't know if you're still on here or not, because I'm not sure when that comment came through about what, uh, why would anyone ask me to do boring, but um, it's a little lady in the neighborhood, okay? She lives down the street, and I, d I did a couple things for her. Um, I only take customs that let me do what I want. She had already bought a couple things that let me do what I want, so then threw me a wild card on like the third piece and was like, can we just get a solid color? Even though she loved the first pieces, I was like, oh gosh, I guess you tricked me. She tricked me. She tricked me. Can you see this? How amazing these are gonna look against these colors. I mean, come on. Let's just lay here. Watch, I'm gonna, I should know better. This is why I'm clumsy, because I don't learn my lesson. We're just gonna lay this here so you can see. Look at, isn't that pretty? Do you see those colors against those, the paints? Like, I don't, I can't, I just can't do, I can't deal with it. I can't, look at it. It's just like made for that. Huh. Mm. I can't help myself when it comes to color. It just leaves me almost, almost speechless. Almost, not quite, you're not that lucky. Okay, so there we go. We're gonna continue pouncing our blend right on down the line of drawers. Pounce it on down. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I will uh, obviously post it when I'm done. If you'd like to see it, I'm really excited. I feel like it's been forever since I did a jewelry box, like forever, even though it wasn't, it was last week, but it feels like forever. <sighs> I hope you guys have a great uh, weekend. It's Friday. Have a great weekend. I will see you um, if you follow my page, then you might see, or the Paint Couture page on Sunday night at 8, 9 p.m. EST, or the Redesign with Prima page at noon EST. Either of those two places is where you're gonna find me hanging out, that or I'm asleep, or with my kids, or painting furniture, not on video. One of those four things is what I'm doing. So um, I will catch you later, have a great weekend, and um, thanks for tuning in. Bye.